Hey guys and welcome back. Today we are going to be going through my July and Booktubeathon wrap up. Now unfortunately I don't have a lot of time today. I'm actually uh, due to run out the door any minute now so um, I am going to try and go through this quickly but I wanted to film this right now because I did start a few books during the Booktubeathon and I would like to continue reading them but I wanted to show you what progress I have made or I did make during the readathon so that's why we're filming this now. Also if you hear noises outside it's because um, I thought the gardener had left and apparently he has not so we're just gonna we're gonna roll with it. To start off there was one book that I read outside of the book a thon during July and that was Common Sense by Thomas Paine. Now I read this in a collection of his works but I marked it as its own individual book on Goodreads because originally it was published as its own individual pamphlet and I know that um, different publishers still do individual publishings of Common Sense. I just couldn't find it outside of a collection. So don't ask me why, but one day I had a random craving for some Thomas Paine and decided to pick this up from my library, and I'm really glad that I did. Uh, it was really interesting to read the full text of Common Sense, and I have to say, it, it does make a lot of sense. He really is obviously very passionate about the arguments that he's he is making but he also lays them out very logically. Also this is insanely quotable so if you've ever wanted to be that obnoxious person who wants to hurl quotations at people and make yourself sound really smart, I would suggest reading Common Sense. Moving on to my Booktubeathon reads, I managed to read three books during the week and then started another two, which means that there were only two books off of my TBR that I did not touch, which were uh, Friendship for Grown Ups and Vicious by V.E. Schwab. So the first book I did complete during Booktubeathon was The Tale of a Yippie by Ak Welsapar, and this was translated from, I should probably have checked that before, uh, this was translated by W.M. Coulson from whatever it is they speak in Turkmenistan. I have to admit ignorance on that point. This is set in a fishing village on the coast of Turkmenistan during the reign of the Soviet Union and these traditional fishermen who have really held on to their old school way of life are being kicked out of their village because the land has been deemed um, a really great recovery spot for people suffering from respiratory illnesses. So the government has kind of, um, I wouldn't say bought their land because it's kind of just kicking them off, but the government has come in and said you, you gotta leave. The majority of the villagers are older and their children have all left for the cities anyways so they're kind of like, okay I guess this is just the way of the times, but there are a few people who are adamantly against leaving their homes, mainly one one fisherman and his family and the ghost of a woman named a yippie who was drowned years and years and years ago um, by the village men um, for fraternizing with outsiders. This ended up being the perfect readathon read not only because it is only about 160 pages but because the writing is just really easy to get through. I wouldn't say it's overly stripped down or overly simplistic, it's just um, quite frankly an easy read. It also reminded me of a lot of different things kind of pieced together so there was um, a lot of philosophical and kind of ideological discussion that very much reminded me of the 11 sections in Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy so if you like ideological or philosophical discussions you might enjoy this. Um, if you are a feminist you might find this very interesting because uh, the ghost of a yippie as I mentioned uh, was drowned by the village men and has kind of come back to take her revenge on the men in the village while they're still there. Uh, there was some interesting discussion of, you know, the nature of man versus woman, if there really is a difference there, uh, the cultural ramifications of having men think they can overpower women and all that. So it was definitely interesting, not something I particularly um, found myself really invested in but interesting nonetheless and I believe I gave this one three stars. The other physical book I read during Booktubeathon was The Girl Who Is Getting Married by Aoko Matsuda which was translated by Angus Turville and this is one of the beautiful Kashiki collection chapbooks uh, translated from Japanese. Now this little tiny book uh, I feel like I need to go back and reread because although it is very short and it seems very simple on the face of it I'm really not sure I got what was going on here and at the end I was like there are so many things that could have actually happened so I definitely need to go back and reread this. On the surface this is about one woman going to visit another woman who she met first in school who was about to get married and basically she is climbing the staircase in this woman's building and, and thinking of different memories and different moments in their friendship 
with each set of stairs. So this is about friendship, it's about growing up, it's about becoming comfortable in your own skin, and I also think it's it's a little bit about mother-daughter relationships, but again, I don't really think I understood what happened at the end there, so I think that's all I'm gonna say, and I believe I gave this one four stars. Then the last book that I completed in its whole for Booktubeathon was the audiobook version of Moonraker by Ian Fleming, and this is book three in the James Bond series. Now I have to say this was my favorite James Bond so far, and I think that's because it's really got everything that I want in a spy thriller. First of all, this is incredibly like lavish and luxurious and like upper class to the max secret agent, uh, especially because the whole adventure kicks off in this exclusive gambling club in London where uh, M brings James Bond to kind of suss out what he thinks might be a mysterious, suspicious situation. Then of course you have um, a character who is sort of faceless, sort of pastless, and has ambiguous loyalties and motivations. You have a nuclear arms race, which I have to say um, is terrifying in real life, but I quite enjoy my spy fiction. And then you even have a car chase, even though the cars are probably, um, you know, not quite as flashy as they might be in, say, a uh, modern James Bond flick. I also really enjoyed Bond's interactions with the woman in this novel because she's not your average damsel in distress. She's not kind of thrown um, unexpectedly into this adventure, but she's actually a policewoman on the Special Forces branch, so she can really hold her own. She's a tough cookie, and uh, she kind of calls Bond on his shit, which I thought was fantastic. I think something that I've always been not so keen on in the Bond novels that I've read so far is the way they really, really do objectify the women and they kind of turn them into this objective for Bond, that he is going to sleep with them by the end of the assignment, they just don't know it yet. And uh, that is very much not the case in Moonraker, so I would definitely recommend this one and I gave it four stars. Then I did start two books during the Booktubeathon and just did not um, get to finish them. The first one of those was Catherine Mansfield's The Garden Party and Other Stories, which of course was to satisfy my bought only for the cover challenge, because look at that thing, it's so beautiful. I read the first short story in here which is called At the Bay. I didn't find it particularly gripping or stimulating. I will say her descriptions of life were beautiful, but overall I didn't feel like a, a real connecting pull to this. So I'm going to continue um, because I would love to find some bit of the inside to match the wonder of the outside. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of it's kind of all I got for you right now. Then finally I started Are You My Mother? A comic drama by Alison Bechdel, which I was going to read for the uh, read a book with a person on the cover challenge. Now I got about, let's see, like 79-ish pages through here. It's a little bit denser than say your average fantasy graphic novel, so this was taking me a little bit longer, but I'm really enjoying it so far. It's kind of a, a real behind the scenes look at things rather than just a look at her family life. It's very much behind the scenes of her own creative process and the difficulties that she has there. So I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this so far and I'm hoping to finish this um, sometime in the next couple of days. So this is what I was reading during the 2017 Booktubeathon and I have to say, regardless of how much reading I did or did not get done, I had the best time this round. There was so much really great positive community um, engagement. I had a lot of fun over on the Twitter account running um, a few sprints and was just really overwhelmed by how nice you guys are, how supportive you are of each other, and uh, just, I don't know, you guys left me feeling all warm and fuzzy. It was really great. I also really, really enjoyed going through all of your videos for the um, video challenge that I issued, and I was really pleasantly surprised to see that a lot of people who maybe weren't making videos or who didn't feel comfortable doing the other challenges took a stab at mine. Um, that was kind of my goal. I'm not big on like icebreakery type things like acting out um, scenes or, or anything like that, so I just wanted to do something that was really about the books and about your beautiful minds and you guys did not disappoint. So that was my July in books and I have to say I am really pleased with what I managed to read. Um, I think Booktubeathon was just kind of the perfect case in the pants to um, getting myself to really sit down every night with a book and just you know make a really strong go of it and I hope to continue that uh, 
for the rest of the year because I am super far behind on my reading challenge. I hope you guys had a great reading month as well. If you took part in Booktubeathon, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I guess I'm gonna wrap it up here. Okay, thanks. Bye.